first of all, I did a piece earlier this week talking about Louisville's uh, a, an active pro- a Black Lives Matter protester in Louisville that was killed, that was murdered. Right, the media reported it as a botched carjacking. That's how they reported it. It's a murder. Uh, the cops are are investigating it. Right, they're like, "We'll see what we can do." And I posted this up, and I got some feedback on Twitter. Most of it was very good. A lot of people were like, holy shit, we haven't heard about this, yada, yada, yada. But I got one that was very strange. And I was like, this is a this is a weird comment here. The comment was just this, right? And uh, basically this woman said, the reason why the media is not covering it is not because of what I'm talking about, right? Not because the media doesn't actually like progressive activists, doesn't really like the Black Lives Matter movement, right? We've, we've seen the Black Lives Matter movement get attacked by the CIA, uh, as as Russian propaganda, right? Like to so divide. That's why the Russians go after the Black Lives Matter people. Like, and that's literally a CIA talking point. This, so, Aaron Mate covered it. He had a CIA analyst that basically said, like, we have to look into Black Lives Matter activists because we think that there might be Russian interference to so divide in America because America never has has never had a problem with race. Uh, you know, to 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 whitewash the history of slavery in and of itself by the CIA. Um, they they're running a coup on history itself, is what the CIA. That's that's how brazen the CIA got. Is they're just they're just like I'll run a coup on history itself. Um, but uh, anyway, so this this woman basically said it's not for the reasons I'm talking about. It's not for it's not like the State Department might have uh, executed them, which they do. Uh, they they've there's evidence and patterns of this happening time and time again. The FBI has attacked and targeted black activists um, all throughout history. But she said the reason why the media is not covering it is because uh, this activist, uh, Hamza Travis Nagdi, was killed by a black person himself. The person he was trying to protect is who killed him. And the reason why the media doesn't want to talk about it is because the cops are going to catch this guy. And because it's going to be an, a, a black on black crime, uh, that's why the media is not going to talk about it. Yeah, that must be it. Which is this like subtle veil racism thing, right? This 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 academic way of being racist. Um, because they'll come out and say, oh, you know, I, I see where your argument is, but I don't really think it's that statistics show. Like they'll throw that word in the statistics show. And it's that subtle form of racism. And that subtle form of racism is what we really need to watch out for. Because I reply pride to this woman, right? Because I, calling people racist right off the bat is difficult because nobody wants to accept their racism. Um, you kind of have to get them to realize what they're saying is is racist on on a particular level. It might not be overt, but it's subtle, right? Basically, she's making the argument that the liberal media bias uh, that exists, so you know, is is because uh, because of black on black crime, and that's why they're not talking about it. Not because of prominent Black Lives Matter activists calling to defund the police was murdered in a so-called botched carjacking. And the cops are like, we don't know what happened. Carjackings happen all the time. It's crazy. Look, there's cars being stolen every day. Like, you know what I mean? They're like, the car is fine, though. That, it, it, you don't have to worry about the car. The car is doing just fine. Like, that's the police's statement on it. And so I replied to her and I was like, look, if you look at history, I feel like you really need an education on American history here. Um, you know, it's shown... It, there, there's there's proof of the intelligence community working tandem with law enforcement to attack, kill, and murder black activists, prominent black activists too. Uh, R. E. Fred Hampton, right? Fred Hampton was uh, essentially baited by the FBI uh, and sent wrong information to the Chicago Police Department, who came in and and murdered him. Essentially, they they opened fire and they shot a, like a barrage of bullets into the into this guy's home in Chicago. But um, so then this woman comes back and basically tells me history doesn't has nothing to do with it here, right? Even though her argument is historically there's more black on black crime than police killing black people, right? That's that's the argument that she's kind of making here, um, it, and so I, I looked at. 
I looked at her Twitter and it's this it's a mix of these conservative and neoliberal talking points and these conservative and neoliberal content creators that she's sharing. Right. People that are just like completely baseless and wrong. And they and what's funny is these conservative and neoliberal content creators will often talk about. Uh, not using emotionality, but that's all they play on. They always play on the emotionality of things, right? They they, they always play on fear and uh, and 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 um, uncertainty and and being like, isn't that scary? Isn't that doesn't that give you anxiety? Shouldn't you work off of that anxiety to say fuck the immigrants and fuck the black community and fuck socialism? Like, isn't that what you need? To, like, that's how they talk about it. But they're like, but everybody be measured about your responses. So. My point is, I think I think what we really need to watch out for, especially with this coming administration, um, is the subtle racism that uh, um, that I don't think people often pay attention to. Right? They kind of write it off. There's an academic form of racism um, that shows up where where people will use terms like statistically and uh, historically to to basically justify and excuse racist behavior and racist talk. Right. Uh, the, they'll do it with Joe Biden constantly. They'll do it with Kamala Harris constantly, where uh, Kamala Harris laughed at a man on death row. Oh, well, you have to understand the pressure she was in, you know, oh, that dark sense of humor. No, I have a dark sense of humor. Uh, you know, George Carlin, Bill Hicks, those folks had a dark sense of humor. Kamala Harris is just a bad person that laughed at a man on death row. Um, and it's this sort of stuff that we have to watch out for because they'll, they'll academize, uh, racism and, and we'll just brush it off and pretend like it doesn't exist. And then we'll have the same kind of rhetoric that we had during the Obama administration where we were like, oh, racism is defeated. Black president racism is defeated when in turn it really wasn't. It just emboldened a lot more people, which, you know, another one of the reasons that led to Trump. Uh, so I, I wanted to point that out because it, it bugged me all. It, like it's been bugging me all week and I wanted to talk about it. <laughs> um Yes, the CIA is running a coup on reality itself, Suzanne. They are they are absolutely running uh, a coup on Suzanne, and it's it's incredible how many people don't know about Fred Hampton and the his and the true history of the Black Panthers. Uh, which, not to toot my own horn, I did do a whole video uh, video series about. There's there's three parts talking about the Black Panthers, talking about um, their relationship with the police, uh, their survival programs, their tenants. Uh, and and what really happened and how the Black Panthers were taken down and why they were taken down. It wasn't because they were violent. It was because um, Hampton was bringing people together uh, and the survival programs were essentially enacting government programs. They, they were working outside the government to help people um, and the government did not did not like that. So they basically used the FBI and fear mongering tactics and propaganda to uh, sway public opinion and then prosecute and kill them in 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 plain sight uh, without anybody really saying much of anything. So uh, that was that was part of it. Um, hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.